This is Achuta Bhava from Nightlight Astrology. It's nice to be back. Happy Monday, everybody. I had a very relaxing week off and got to spend some time with family, enjoyed uh, my birthday while, while my dad was visiting. And um, that's funny. The transits always feel very different to me when I'm not in content creation mode. It's like they're always there and I always notice them in my personal life. But it's just it's really different experiencing transits when I'm not writing or thinking about how to talk about them on YouTube. <laughs> it's like, so I always find it really refreshing to have like a week off. It really sort of resets me as um, someone who talks about astrology every day. Anyway, hope you guys were well. I missed all of you, missed interacting with you guys. Uh, today, we are going to talk about Mercury and the sun opposite Pluto. A lot of Cancerian energy in the air, super uh, Mercury opposite Pluto weekend. I wonder if you guys already experienced that. I had a lot of good grabbed stories coming in. We'll be doing a grabbed episode this week, I think. Um, well, before we get into it, don't forget to like and subscribe, share your comments in the comments section, click on the notification bell for updates once you subscribe to get notified when I post something new or go live. Transcripts of my daily talks can be found on my website, nightlightastrology.com, where you can check out my readings and courses. If you have any questions, feel free to email info at nightlightastrology.com. So today we are looking at Mercury in Cancer opposite Pluto in Capricorn. That is July 18th, followed on the 19th by the sun in Cancer opposite Pluto in Capricorn. Let me put this up on the real-time clock so that you can see uh, exactly what we're looking at here. And I've got five themes to watch for. This is definitely the transit of the week. There's um, not much as th this really, I mean, it's it steals, the, uh, it steals the show this week. There's nothing that's really bigger than this one. Uh, so we're starting the week with it, of course. Okay, here we go. So you can see here are the transits of Mercury and the Sun opposite Pluto. Mercury is going to slide past that opposition really quickly. You would have been feeling it already over the weekend, but then the Sun follows it up right away. Venus is also entering the sign of Cancer. So that could be pretty interesting watching uh, Venus uh, change the, the mood a little bit around what's been happening with this Cancerian uh, drama. Uh, maybe Venus brings a little bit of an uplift. We're also pretty soon we're going to have our eye on Mars heading into the conjunction with Uranus. When I started off in 2022 talking about the astrology of the year, late July, especially the Mars-Uranus conjunction was um, one of the ones I had my eye on. Like that's a huge transit. So it'll be interesting to see what comes up there. But five themes to watch for today with Mercury and the Sun opposite Pluto and Capricorn. The first one is obvious. It's emotional drama, family drama, living environment drama. It is that volcanic um, explosion or expulsion or purgation of things that are caught, trapped, repressed, uh, in stuck in the unconscious or the subconscious. Um, it is all that comes up from the past or the history of the family and the roots. It's the darker currents or themes uh, the heavier, more emotionally challenging or uh, dynamic themes around um, things like your family or your your living environment, that the place of nuclear emotional investment. Um, so, you know, the potential for Mercury and the sun opposite Pluto it, for it, explosions emotionally is very strong. That's probably one of the, that's why I put it number one. That can include family drama. It can include civil drama, like in your neighborhood, living environment could include your neighborhood. Um, we've been unfortunately dealing with some very passive aggressive and nosy neighbors. Um, and you know, I just, I couldn't believe it. Like if you remember at the new moon, new moon in cancer square Jupiter and Aries, I said, this moon cycle feels like it could be real Hatfields versus McCoy's. And I was just joke. I mean, I was not, I mean, it was, it was just a funny way of putting it, I guess. But it was like, wow, no, we're actually we're actually dealing with people who, um, you know, we're just I'll just put it the, just jerky neighbors. That's the only way I have some great neighbors around us. But we found out we have some real a-holes living around us, too. Oh, well, it's life. And uh, I'm, you know, on my worst days, I'm sure I'm the a-hole. So, you know, whatever. Anyway, uh, so the that's the big one to watch for, though. Watch for that that. It's not, and it's not just drama. I mean, the, 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 what I mean by drama is catharsis. It's the, the, the moment of peak 
dynamism within something happening around home, family, emotional, mental, psychological themes that we're, places where we feel more vulnerable and it has some history behind it. And it's reaching that, that moment of transformational intensity. So that's the first one to watch for just this whole week, but especially the first two, three days of the week. Number two, seeing a pattern, changing a pattern, and then feeling as though I've taken a big step in my emotion, emotional, psychological growth and maturity. It's when you level up as a parent or a spouse or a sister or, uh, you know, a son or a daughter or something like that. It's the moment when you see a pattern very clearly in your family and you recognize it within yourself. And suddenly it feels like there's been a transformation of family karma because you've seen something, you've named it, and you've decided this is how, this is how I'm going to respond as a way of not uh, perpetuating the pattern. So watch for that as well. I think that um, the potential to see deeply rooted um, patterns, to have a real emotionally palpable understanding of where and why something has been the way that it has been, uh, something with history. That tends to be very Cancerian. Plutonian as well in the sense that it's heavy, it's dark, it's it's yucky, uh, it's stagnant and stuck, That, but now it's being released and, you know, toxin, it can feel like toxins being purged emotionally or psychologically. Three, death of the father. Now, the father is really an archetypal figure. Sometimes this could be literal, like literally dads or grandfathers could die, or you could see real, real intense drama relative to fathers. Um, you know, and that could look a million, that could, that could show up in a million different ways. But when we say death of the father, what we really mean is here's Pluto, Lord of death and rebirth, um, coming into an oppositional you know, form of tension with the sun, the planet that is often related to at least the archetypal ideal image of the father. As a father, myself, for example, I perhaps I go through um, a moment this week of realizing how I can change or improve or understanding a pattern within myself in terms of what it means to be a father to my girls. Or, you know, you could see this as something that's happening, um, something that a dad is literally going through you know, uh, a health crisis or a scare, a dramatic twist or turn of fate. Um, you could see not just fathers, but also let's extend this to any solar figure, heroes, leaders, CEOs, executives, people with the people with some greater sense of authority or responsibility in your workplace. Um, so solar figures may go through a real sort of transformational crisis. Now, the other thing to watch for is the when we say death of the father, remember that the son also, in addition to father, can be about what, what is our ideal archetypal image. And this is one that has some, probably some kind of history, like a, what has my ideal been for throughout the course of my life? Almost like the getting presented with like a, a biographical picture of your ambitions, your ideals, your hopes, your dreams, your aspirations, and seeing some of them die or realizing something about them has been unhealthy or recognizing that a certain path you're taking is not the one you want to take any longer, an ideal that's changing. Maybe it has to become more mature. It's been naive in some way or childish in some way. Or on the other hand, maybe you've not been, you've been overly realistic uh, or, um, overly practical or you've been too restrictive or, you know, kind of um, limiting yourself somehow. And the sun opposite Pluto, especially Cancer Capricorn, can be about letting that inner child in you dream or, or pursue something that has emotional, um, that, that you feel emotional, um, emotionally charged about. I love this. You know, this is really what I love. So sometimes it's also about letting the sun shine and, and seeing the sun come up uh, through the darkness, kind of a dark night of the soul, but almost like an Easter morning theme. Those those would also be very, I, I just kind of camp them in with death of the father because what I'm really talking about when I talk about death of the father is Pluto and the sun, uh, in the sun being an image of the father. So 
Wounds with history. Sometimes you are visiting you. It's like weird karmic mirroring. You're going to encounter something in the world and it's going to give you insight into the history of a pattern, a wound, a hurt. Um, so watch for healing, but also watch for coming to understand a wound or a hurt. Uh, and it's it, almost like it's biographical depths. Um, the sun, Mercury, Pluto can be like uh, deep, um, deep realizations or emotional breakthroughs, especially while understanding something that has history. I talked about that a little bit earlier with family karma as well, but this doesn't necessarily have to be rooted in the family. It could just be, this is how I've done relationships for 30 years and I'm, I'm seeing the pattern reflected in this person's, you know, drama in my workplace right now or something. So you can, um, you know, sometimes you can understand something about yourself really at a profoundly deep level by witnessing something that's happening that's it, like it carries an echo of it um, in someone or something else in the periphery around you. So watch for that kind of effect as well. And number five, saying the difficult thing out of love, especially Mercury in the sun. It's like, I love you, but I have to leave you. I love you and I have to tell you this. Um, the need for emotional honesty, to not hide something, for the, the need for the truth. You know, there's nothing worse in the world than telling someone, you know, hey, uh, I'm really, I'm really upset with what you did or whatever. And their basic response is, sorry, you feel that way. You know, <laughs> this is maybe one of those transits where, um, you know, if people aren't able to have insight, um, self insight, self reflection as to the, the role that they've played in the history of a relationship or a family or a pattern um, that, you know, if they're, if they're not able to do that, you're going to see things like divorces or you're going to see things like, look, I, you know, this relationship can't last or it, it's no, it's no longer feasible for me. Um, so emotional honesty, emotional breakthroughs, emotional sincerity, saying the difficult thing, owning up to the difficult thing, because love is more important than protecting yourself or being right. So I think about this as, a, as an opportunity for like a really sincere moment of emotional reckoning. Uh, maybe again, it's focused on family with the Cancerian emphasis, but I don't think it has to be. I think it could be, um, you know, it, it could very easily be about just anything that has something that I should say or have been wanting to say, but have been keeping inside out of fear or, uh, you know, fear of what, what, it, what, what, that it might hurt to say something, uh, or to, to allow ourselves to even start thinking something with this one. Uh, Pluto tends to greatly empower those who um, are um, willing to be honest at a very deep level. Um, honesty and authenticity, Pluto seems to reward somehow. So even if it's dark or heavy, it's, it's so relieving to be honest. So those are uh, some of the themes that I would watch for. Uh, I think the, the watch also just Pluto sun in general, um, the, the theme of the dying hero or uh, the something bigger than ourselves that we might sacrifice for because of deep concern and care. That's a very Cancerian thing. And when paired with Pluto, you could also see like the, um, you know, the, the, the mother who cares so much about the, the son that they'll check the son into rehab, you know, take them there, trick them. You know, I'm not, I'm taking you somewhere. Where are you taking me? I'm not telling you. I don't know. It's like a movie. That's a picture of a movie that's in my head or something. So it's, um, there's, something heroic, but potentially painful about the sun opposite Pluto and Cancer. Uh, Cancer, sorry, sun and Cancer opposite Pluto and Capricorn. 
Okay, I've said enough for today. I hope that that was useful. Um, if you have any stories to share over the next few days, we're probably going to be doing a grabbed episode this week, and I think these would make for nice additions. So use the hashtag grabbed in the comment section. Tell us the Mercury, Sun, opposite Pluto story that comes into your awareness this week. The planets were called Grahas by Indian astrologers, which meant grabbers. Um, the planets tend to grab and direct our lives when we're not living with a kind of reflective awareness, which is what astrology is here to help us with. And uh, if you have a story you'd like to share, but you don't want to share it in the comment section, but you, you don't mind it being used in a future episode, storytelling episode, email it to us, grabbed at nightlightastrology.com. We'll use it. We'll, we collect all the stories there and uh, we'll be sharing some of them soon. Lots of good ones that have come in. Thank you all so much for sharing them with me. It's always an honor. Don't forget to like and subscribe, share your comments, click on the notification bell for updates. You can always find a transcript of my daily talks on my website, nightlightastrology.com. Any questions about anything on the website, readings or courses, email info at nightlightastrology.com. All right, that's what I've got for today. Glad to be back and see you again tomorrow. Bye, everyone. Mm -hmm.